Good blessed uh, Friday night, uh, August the 28th, uh, 2020, 2020, time of change, time for vision. Uh, it's about 10.08 uh, p.m. I want to come to you all briefly tonight. Uh, tomorrow is not promised to anybody, not even me. Uh, but I just want to keep on trying to give y'all what God give me. You know, uh, it's a lot of things happening in this world today, and some people don't want to accept the fact uh, that the things that is happening uh, lately has been happening to a certain ethnic group of people. And that certain ethnic group of people happen to be uh, black people. If we if we notice, even though we have more black on black crime than anything, but we have a lot of uh, individuals that's killing blacks and. I focus on that because of the fact that we went through slavery and a whole bunch of other things. Even though we are physically free, it's a lot of things still need to be changed. You know, uh, when a white person kills somebody Especially like this, we'll just talk about the thing in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's one of the biggest issues it is, is uh, the judge gave uh, the young guy a continuous to September the 25th, uh, 2020, next month, because his private attorney is preparing a case that he said would be self-defense. You see, I don't care what type of defense he called it, but if this young guy done came from another state, another city, with a firearm coming to another state, across state line, into a state in a city that he's not permitted legally to carry a firearm, then law enforcement see him and these other white individuals walking around with the assault, these assault rifles on the roof around the car dealership and still allowed after the curfew they still allowed these white individuals with these assault rifles to still be in the streets. And what was really touching to me, even though there was white individuals that got shot and killed in Kenosha, Wisconsin, this past Tuesday, August the 25th, 2020, and he, they was killed by a white individual, but the sheriff or the chief of police made a statement that every person that stands for the, for the law and are God-fearing should be asked asking or demanding that he resign. Listen to his statement. He wanted to say, but he, he stopped in his tracks. He wanted to say, if them guys that got killed and shot would have obeyed the curfew, they wouldn't be dead now. But he stopped in his tracks. You see what I'm saying? He said it was a curfew and, uh, this, this wouldn't have happened. This situation wouldn't have happened if people would have obeyed the curfew. But yet they seen this white guy running around here with this assault rifle. If you say it ain't racism in this country, it is. Let me take you back to 1945. Look at this picture here. Is it showing good? This picture here is, was taken in the 1940s. You want me to tell you who this young man is? This happened to be the 92-year-old World War II veteran, veteran honorably discharged 
Johnny A. Ivey Sr., my dad, who's in my house right now. He was drafted from this racist town that I live in now, Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County. It was racist when he was here because him and the people before him and some of the people after him into 1961, the blacks was forced to go to one school, Lincoln School. The white people wouldn't allow blacks to go to the Charleston, Missouri, uh, Consolidated School number seven here in Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County, which better known now as Charleston R1 School District. A lawsuit had to be filed. If you don't believe me, I want y'all, all you listeners, white and black, whether you like me or not, Google up Davis versus the uh, Charleston, Missouri, Mississippi County uh, Board of Education or Charleston, Missouri Consolidated, Davis versus Charleston, Missouri Consolidated School number seven and see what these black folks went through. Now, he was drafted from a racist president's town. Hit my daddy's daddy was a sharecropper. And he he uh raised cotton. My daddy and them didn't go out and steal and violate the law. But let me tell you this here. When my daddy was drafted in that military, still today he tell me. And if you look at some of my YouTube videos when I interviewed him because I wanted to be on record, he said when he went to the military, guess what? It wasn't no different than he left from Charleston, Missouri. Here it is, they fighting against Adolf Hitler, who was trying to take over the world, saying white supremacy rule how it is almost now. How it is almost now. But here it is, he said the blacks had to sleep in separate barracks than the whites. But yet you're going to draft my daddy and some of his friends who didn't make it back. But let me take you somewhere else, right on the side of them. This is Larry Wallace, also from Missouri, Sykeston, Missouri, my cousin, drafted. Both of them, 18 years old, but he was drafted in the Vietnam War. He came home on a leave in around 1970. I was about 12 years old. He came to Chicago and visited my mother now, and he told us he was scared. He wasn't scared of the people that they was fighting against. He was scared the way the white people was treating them. He said he didn't know if he was going to make it back. Guess what? He died. I remember seeing my mother crying when she got the phone call saying that he was missing in action at first. We don't believe the enemy killed him. We believe some of them racist soldiers killed him like they doing in Fort Hood right now. Killing blacks, women, and Spanish people. Raping women. Getting them pregnant and killing them. It ain't stopped yet since from back then. But my cousin was scared. But let me tell you about my daddy's brother, Ernest Ivy, senior. He's buried in Bloomfield. He fought in the Korean War. He said the same thing. He said them people told them to go home. It ain't y'all fight. But let me tell you this here, all white people ain't prejudiced. But if you said it, was, it wasn't racism when my daddy was in there, if you said it wasn't racism when my uncle, may he rest in peace, Ernest Ivy, if you said it wasn't racism when my cousin Larry Wallace was in there, then you, you, you don't want to face reality. That same statement that that sheriff made, if, if them guys that got killed, had they obeyed the, the uh, curfew, they might have not been dead. It reminds me of this racist chief of police down here in Charles, Missouri, Mississippi County, Robert Bobby Hearns. When two guys was coming by my house at night, harassing me and my family, scaring my daughters and my daddy, and I called the police, 
The police didn't do nothing. But if you look at some of my videos, it caught the police on camera. Going across the street with these two guys, laughing with them. And I made YouTube on it, laughing with them. And I made a report to the, the chief of police. Took him a month. It took them 10 days to write a report, but they didn't write the report what I made about them harassing. They made a report saying that I, I said I'm going to kill them. I said if they come on the property, I'm going to kill them. And I still have said now, you threatening me and come on this property, I don't care if you the police. I don't care if you Donald Trump. You come on this property talking about threatening me, I'm going to do my best to kill you. I got a right to do that. But let me tell you what this chief of police said. This chief of police, Robert Bobby Hearns, who's not qualified to be a chief of police, just the chief of police because his uncle, Warren E. Hearns, was the governor here. And Warren E. Hearns, may he rest in peace, his wife, Betty Hearns, was a Missouri State representative. That's why he had that authority his family been running this the this 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 area for for maybe almost a century but he's his when he responded to my complaint this is what he told me y'all he told me yeah they was wrong for what they're doing and if he said they didn't say it i got it in black and white i didn't sent it to the justice department in Washington, D.C., I didn't sent it to the FBI in St. Louis and other places to let them see. You see the sheriff, the present sheriff now, they they buddies, him and the chief of police is buddies. They go to the same church. But let me tell you what he said. He told me, yeah, they was wrong, but if you stop cussing my officers out, maybe I'll uh, uh, handle your complaints. But I'm going to leave y'all with this here. If you either further cause, you can't be neutral, you against it. Black folks, white folks, Spanish folks, anybody. All y'all went to Washington March. March when they kill these black blacks, killing blacks too. Wake up, y'all. This is a new day. But I'm going to tell you one thing is, my daddy and my cousin, they didn't lie. My daddy's still alive to talk about it. Take a look at them pictures. They fought not for us to be separated. They fought. And I'm going to leave now. Peace be still.